Hello there, this is Attic PC Guy, and uh, this episode will go about the basic tools that you need for case modding. If you're not aware what case modding is, I have done a short uh, episode about it before. You can check it out in the link that should be popping up on your screen right now. Uh, it goes basically about modifying a computer case or building a computer case from scratch, either an actual case or anything more elaborate like a, a desk PC or building a strangely shaped computer case from scratch. Now, as you can imagine, you do need some tools for that. But you might think that you need some very specialized tools for that, uh, like, uh, I don't know, welding or soldering. That's not necessarily true. Uh, I will give you a quick rundown of the tools. You need some mostly basic household tools to do that, things that if you ever did any work at home like DIY stuff, you probably have most of it already, and if you don't, they are not super expensive to begin with. Now, what you do need is a good workspace where you can sew your stuff, where you have room to work, and uh, then you would be all set to let your creativity run free. Now, I will give you a quick rundown of the tools and uh, the most important ones and the more, the more specific ones and the higher end ones. Now, let's start with the basics. The Dremel. Dremel is, well, Dremel is a brand, but uh, it's basically a rotary tool with uh, a varied uh, assortment of uh, attachments that you can use uh, on that tool. Uh, Dremel is the more known brand of it, but there are many others, as you can see uh, there at the bottom. Uh, Bosch, DeWalt, and Black and & Decker, and a bunch of others. Although Dremel is basically the staple for case modding, it has actually become kind of a, a verb on itself to Dremel something. Uh, it has become the symbol of case modding because you can almost do anything with one of these tools if you have the right attachment. You actually eliminate the need of some other tools that I'm going to suggest if you have a good tool of these and if you are handy with it. Uh, and it is not even super expensive and it is handy for many other household projects and other DIY stuff. Uh, there are many variations of it, as you can see. There are also multiple price points, but the price points hang mostly on uh, the attachments that come with it, because the rotary tool itself, for example, the Dremel 3000 that I have been recommended, um, you can get it easily for 45-ish euros. I've seen it on sale for 30-something. But yeah, it's that is the price, and that would come with about 15 or something accessories to it. But you can always buy attachments and uh, heads separately, uh, one by one, or in a kit. And uh, that would uh, make it a lot cheaper. So let's say you have, more importantly on these tools, you have cutting tools, you have sanding tools, you have engraving tools. Uh, you can use the cutting tools to cut through, I don't know, acrylic, uh, thin sheets of wood, thin sheets of aluminum. Uh, anything that uh, you need precision work, this is pretty great with. You can engrave acrylic with it. Um, you can etch acrylic with it. Uh, you can engrave on other things as well. So this is a very uh, versatile tool that you can do a lot of things with if you have the right attachments. Now, I recommend not only for this tool, but for the, all the others, if you are going to do a, a project that um, requires some amount of time to work off, just get a corded one, because uh, the battery ones usually are more expensive, and then you're always running out of battery and having to recharge. So um, just get a corded one. This will, like I said, will set you back around 45 euros ish for the basic kit and then you can get the heads they're usually universal you can get some random heads for like a few euros each if you want and then you can actually choose the specific ones you want and not have a suitcase full of random heads that you will never use so this is the very base of uh, modding and it is not very expensive as you can see now let's go on for drills you'll probably need to drill stuff on your case or whatever you are working on. Everyone usually has a drill at home. If you don't, you can get very cheap ones, as cheap as 20 euros. Uh, yeah, same story. You can get the drill separately and just get the individual ones that you want, as opposed to spending, for example, 160 euros on a case full of drills that you might not even ever need. So 
yeah, there is that. One thing that you might need is uh, a center punch, and that is used to make a little um, indentation on the material you're drilling to make sure that your drill goes straight and has something to start drilling on, as opposed to uh, moving all over the place, and then you have a hole that's a millimeter or two off center, or that is skewed and going uh, sideways. So that is something and but yeah a center punch is more of a cheap thing that you can get for a couple of years as well so i'm not even going to mention it next up we have the jigsaw jigsaws can also be very cheap can they can be more expensive again get a corded one this is very useful if you want to cut uh, large uh, long cuts on something as opposed to the dremel which is better for smaller and more precise cuts now, a jigsaw is also something that you might already have at home. If you don't, like you see, it is reasonably cheap and um, it is very easy to Google for if you actually search for a jigsaw tool or jigsaw power tool as opposed to a jigsaw because then you get the freaking uh, Halloween costumes and stuff like that, which is not really what you're looking for unless you are doing a jigsaw themed case, which uh, is not very likely, although I'm sure some people are big fans and enjoy it. Now, next up. Now we are going for the section of stuff that is not really essential anymore. These first three were the essential ones-ish, although you could argue that you don't necessarily need a jigsaw, but the first three were the most important ones. Now for more specialized stuff. If you are, for example, bending acrylic or plastic to uh, make custom shapes for your case, or to uh, bend, for example, uh, any sort of uh, acrylic tubing for uh, water cooling, you name it, you have, for example, heat guns. These are also not very expensive, as you can see. You can get them for uh, near 20 euros. You can probably get a cheap one for even less. Uh, I've seen people saying around 10 euros even. But yeah, uh, they have a very big temperature range. Uh, they go Some go all the way to 600, like you see here. You don't need it to go that hot, but in any case, they're all reasonably cheap. And this is used for bending plastic, for bending acrylic. You heat it up, it gets a bit softer, and then it cools down and it becomes hard again and it retains that shape. So it's very good for that and for getting your custom shapes in place and to shape uh, your plates to whatever shape you might imagine, need or desire. I shall add that you probably want to have a good pair of uh, gloves, uh, more specifically leather, real leather, I might add, because if you're going to go with plastic ones or fake stuff, they might be flammable or, some, or they might not isolate properly from the heat, and you're going to be handle be handling hot plates, some bend at around 200 degrees, for example, so that's the temperature that you need it on and you're going to be handling it with your hands so you don't want to your gloves to catch on fire or to still feel the heat through the gloves so get a good pair of leather gloves if you are going to use tools like this now next up we have the rivet gun if you are building a case from scratch or heavily modifying your cage you might need to remove the rivets by drawing them out and then setting in new rivets to hold everything together a bit more sturdily again it's a bit of a more specialized thing, it's not strictly necessary, but it is also not very expensive, as you can see, you can get it for yeah less than 10 euros, so if you need it, just grab it, uh, it's not the end of the world, then you need the rivets themselves, but those are also not super expensive, you can find it anywhere at some uh, craft shop or a home improvement store. Now, again, this is strictly unnecessary, it's a very specialized blowtorch. It's kind of fills the same function as the heat gun, except this is very good for if you, for example, have to cut acrylic. This is good to make the edges smooth again uh, and not um, have, you know, little jagged impressions there. But again, not essential. Also, again, cheap-ish. If you really want it, you can get it for a, yeah, a couple of euros. So, well, obviously you will need the fuel for it, for the gas, but the uh, Boltorch itself, not super expensive. Now, that is it as far as tools go that you might need for a random standard project. If you are going to be a lot of uh, doing a lot of LED lighting, you might need a soldering station for 
soldering the different LED strips to each other if you are going to chain them, uh, to daisy chain them basically, and make them run on the same power line and sync with each other and all that sort of stuff. Soldering stations are also a very wide range. You have the more expensive ones, you have the cheaper ones. You probably just need one of the cheaper ones because they get the job done. It's not, um, you're not doing professional work. Um, you know, it's just a simple wire. So the cheap ones will do 20 euros ish. You probably will find less. I've seen less at some stores uh, physically. Um, but yeah, again, this is very specially for uh, wiring uh, if you are doing that sort of work. Otherwise, completely unnecessary. Now, if you are very serious into case modding and have some money to spare, there are things that are also very handy. And that these are laser engravers for engraving stuff on material and making it look super neat, super great. But you also need a special engraver. And uh, I have actually looked at it myself because I have been contemplating getting one in the future. Uh, but it is a difficult thing to shop for if you're not into the whole field because you have some quite cheap ones, 80 euros, 88 euros, 100. Uh, it's cheap for this sort of thing, sure. But then you have all sorts of specifications, like um, the engraving area, for example. Most of the cheap ones have an engraving area of only about 3 to 4 centimeters, uh, square centimeters. That's, uh, I'm bad with uh, Imperial system, but that's about, uh, let's say, 1.5 to inches, um, square inches. Um, and that's not a whole lot. And to get one with a decent engraving area, like 10 centimeters or 20, you will pay a lot more or have one of this sort that is basically you have to assemble it yourself and uh, makes it a bit more complicated. But anyway, uh, it's not a, it's far from an essential tool. This is more of a higher end modding thing. And you might have uh, any other place that you might use it for. Uh, if you need, for example, 3D printers, um, specialized tools, uh, laser engravers or cutters, sometimes there is fabrication labs in bigger cities, for example, that you can go there and uh, have your work done and you don't actually have to own the machines. And that makes it a lot, lot easier to have special projects done that you do not have um, tools for, like in this case. Something to keep in mind if you do get an engraving machine, research very well uh, all the parameters of it, like engraving area, the color of the laser, and if it is, if it has a ventilation or not. Because if you are, for example, engraving acrylic, it might release fumes that are flammable. And if that is the case, you might want to keep it well ventilated so that the laser that itself does not ignite those fumes. And then you might have a bit of an issue in your hands, like your house burning down or something. So keep that in mind research properly and uh, stay safe uh, because uh, this can be a problem while engraving certain materials. It's a beam of energy basically, so it could ignite something if it is not up to specifications and not handled correctly. So uh, yeah, keep safety in mind as well. Now for the last tool we have 3D printers. They are an expensive technology that have be, has been getting more popular and cheaper throughout the years. This is a recommended model that I have seen for starting um, 3D printer people. I was going to say starting 3D printers but uh, you're not a printer otherwise you wouldn't need to buy one. So um, 3D printer people, yes. The Ender 3, that is a starter range 3D printer. It seems to be mostly affordable, considering it is a very new, very specialized technology. It can print things um, up to, let us find the information about the size that it can print to. See what the website says. Blah, blah, blah. Description. Product formatting, forming size. So you can print things about 22 centimeters, or, well, 22 centimeters wide, long, and uh, high. So that's a pretty decent thing for 3D printers. I mean, if you're going to be printing something for a case or a mod that you're working on, you are unlikely to need something that's bigger than 20 something centimeters. Um, 
I might add that uh, the filament that is used to print to actually you know produce the product is not super expensive if you order it uh, online at select sites it's not it's just the printer itself that is more expensive but you do need some knowledge of um, uh, 3d modeling to actually make your models to actually design them so uh, yeah there is that uh, you need to learn some extra stuff to use it as opposed to for example the laser engraver that you need to know how to operate it but it prints off a normal um, picture like a jpeg or a png it's a lot easier to actually design it than to make a 3d model so this like i said this is a very specialized thing that only the more hardcore um, mothers will be considering so it's not for the beginner people like me for example i'm thinking in the future as in in several years maybe getting one of these same for the engraver but for the rest i just bought a drill and a jigsaw very recently i'm looking into getting a dremel and then i might get a heat gun and a rivet gun but i'll call it a day and i'll see where this uh, journey takes me now that was the rundown of all the tools that you need for case modding plus a few extras that you don't really need but are really nice and handy if you are going into the higher end competitive modding scene um, this is just for tools then there's a whole array of materials that you need i will go through that on the next episode not to make it super long uh, acrylic plastics uh, screws rivets uh, blah, 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 you name it uh, it's usually a bit affordable most of it if you don't need huge areas of it uh, i mean if you need an enormous acrylic plate or an enormous plastic plate there's a different sorts of plastic with different uses blah 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 all that it's all very specialized again i'll make a full episode of it but this is what you can expect in terms of the basic tools that you need for uh, case mod jigsaw drill dremel or rotary tool i call it dremel because yeah and perhaps a rivet gun and you're good to go and uh, you can uh, make your dream case come true this is attic pc guy i'll see you next time and uh, enjoy